Hello. Oh, very good. It works. <laughs> All right. This is going to be our makeup classroom exercise from November 10th, 2016. I was out sick, as you can tell by my awesome radio voice right now. There is a perk. And this is going to be uh, where we left off last time. So we've been working on this artillery project. I'll go ahead and open it. And at the end of the last class, we basically got some of the functionality working where the enemy can shoot back. And the challenge that I leveled as we left class was, okay, now that you figured out or we figured out how to get the enemy to shoot, how can we get our player to shoot back? And so your task was to try to figure out how to make the turret work and how to return fire. And so that's where we're going to start. I have uploaded this exact starting point to Blackboard. It's actually uploading now, or I would show you exactly where it is, but it shouldn't be that hard to find. It should be under Labs Unity 1, and then there should be something called Artillery 3. And it has the zip file for which I'm starting. The only thing that I've changed in this versus where I left off last time is I've gone ahead and moved the camera back. Let me show you where it is in the game view so that you can tell. You can Now you can just see the very lip of that of that turret there it's going to become our first person view and we're basically going to be firing shots from this turret and we need to be able to have it move back and forth so that's where we're going to begin um, let me just run this real quick and so we can see exactly where we left off in any second now our menacing monster will come around the corner and remember we did the trick with the green line in debug so that we can see his range of fire and as soon as he gets in range he does his little dance and starts shooting at us and they're not that interesting right now they're just little green balls maybe we'll fix that later as what I like to call adding a little razzle dazzle we'll do that at the end if we have time um, let's see so I'm gonna stop this and we need to be able to operate our turret and our turret is essentially going to make this into a first-person view so why don't we take a look at our tower so what we want to do before you even begin especially since we didn't make this particular asset we inherited it from the asset store or i guess we downloaded it and used it from the asset store let's take a look at what we have to work with there's two pieces to this and as you can see there's a piece here which is the base and then there's this separate piece let me zoom out a little bit so you can see and this is what made me giddy when we downloaded it i can have the whole thing or I can have just that part of the turret and that's very important because I need to be able to rotate this around the y-axis and I would expect that to rotate back and forth and if I can do this in the instar then I would expect to be able to do that in code so let me turn this back to zero so that we have a fresh starting point now it seems like this ought to be really easy, right? So actually, I've done you a little bit of dirty here, and I've given you something that's actually kind of difficult. Um, so we'll walk through it, and I'm going to go through the thought process that you'd go through if you've never tried this before. And I'm just going to make all the mistakes so you can see what the problem is. And there are a lot of ways, of course, as with anything, there are a lot of ways to solve this. I'm going to present you with one that's not highly mathematical, that's easy to understand, and in my book, that wins every time. Of course, we can use radians and arc tangents and all kinds of trigonometry to solve some of the problems that we're going to run into. But if I can avoid that, I usually do. And it isn't because I can't do the math, it's because I would rather it be accessible and easy to understand, uh, even for me, because I'm going to come back to this in a year and wonder what the heck I was thinking, and oh my gosh, I've forgotten what Arc Tangent 2 does, and now I'm going to have to read a bunch of books just to get back up to where I was. So I'm going to present you with a way that will work really well without anything harder than subtraction and multiplication. Easy math. Works for everybody. All right, so let's get started on this. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to rotate this target. Well, that might be uh, pretty easy considering we actually did that in the advanced class last week, and I know you guys eavesdrop on each other. Um, I'll go ahead and pull the script that I have for them. It was the tank controller that I made them write. And we have this, you know, a lot of this doesn't apply because this is the network stuff they're working on. 
Um, but if we look at this, part of this is exactly what we need, right? Because they have this tank that spins when you use the, um, the arrow keys. And so that's basically what we need. We just don't want to move along Z. We want to rotate along the horizontal axis. So let's just borrow this. I know you're going to have to type it, but I'm just going to borrow it. And I'm going to create a script on this part right here. Make sure you're on this part right here. Because if, you, if you're up here, when we go to rotate, you're going to rotate the entire turret, and it's going to look weird. So make sure you're on just the rocket launcher part. And let's add a component. And go down to the bottom. And select New Script. And I'll call this Turret Control. Sounds good to me. Or Controller whichever you prefer, and I'll double click it to open it in Visual Studio. There we go. Okay. Now for this, I'm going to use late update instead of just regular update, because I like for that to go last. And I'm going to, again, use the code that I'm borrowing from the other script. And so basically I'm going to get the axis and that's the first part of it. And then the second part of it is right. I'm on another screen. Bear with me right here. It's two lines, so it's pretty easy. There we go. Okay. So that is about as simple and as straightforward as it gets. So let's see how that looks. I'll switch back over to unity, run it. And if everything goes well, I ought to be able to press the arrow keys and spin around. And we've got a spinning turret. Not bad. Now, if we were doing a 3D uh, game where this was, say, a non-player character, this is probably exactly what we would want. We would want this turret to spin all the way around. But my idea for our demonstration was to make this player controlled from the point of view of the turret itself. So the first thing I'm going to do after making it spin around is I'm probably going to want to go ahead and parent the camera to that turret so that we're always looking in the same direction. So let's just do that. We're just going to drag the camera and drop it right there so it's parented. And now when we run this, we'll see our first issue. Okay, that works really well, right? Except for that part right there. So as a game designer, as a programmer, I'm happy. But as a game designer, I'm not because now I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I'm not really supposed to see. So the challenge in this exercise really comes from how do I limit the range of motion through here? And this is actually a problem that we've seen before if you've taken the intro class with Mr. Kura. You went through an exercise that was on the Unity 3D site. It's a tutorial that everybody had to do called, I forgot what it's called. It was the Asteroids game. I think it's just called Space Shooter. And in Space Shooter, you had to clamp. You used a function called clamp, math.clamp, to clamp the position of your ship. And so we're kind of in the same boat here. We, we, what we want to do instead, though, is we want to clamp a rotation. And so let's go through why that's hard. And I'm going to make some mistakes along the way so you can see what the thought process is. And so let's go to that. So let's go back and look at our code. And so the first thing you might be tempted to do is, well, let's limit x. We can say if x is greater than or less than something, then that's the first place that we want to target. Um, it's actually totally wrong, but I think that's where a lot of people start when they go after this. So before we jump into it, why don't we figure out exactly what it is that we're trying to change and what the numbers look like in the inspector. So let's go back and look over here and let's go ahead and run this. And let's just eyeball it. So what I want you to do is while this is running, I want you to look up here at your rotation, up here at Y. So as I turn this, oh, we have to make sure that we have the rocket launcher selected in the hierarchy for this little experiment to work. Why don't we start it again, make sure that's selected, and it's going to start at a rotation of zero, which is what you'd expect. So as I move left, the number gets smaller, and just eyeballing it, I'm going to go a little bit. That's probably about perfect right there at negative 37. And I can probably round that off to just negative 37. If I go the other direction, same thing. Okay, that's way too much because now I can see stuff that I shouldn't see. 
I can eyeball it right there. It looks like my range over there is about 41. And I could mitigate this a little bit. I could give us a little bit more range probably by moving the turret forward in the scene just a little ways. And that's really just a level design problem. My challenge is to give us a turret where I can clamp the range of rotation so that I can prevent us from this problem where we can see behind us and really to move in a direction that's not legal. All right. So what we learned from this experiment was that if we go roughly 37-ish in the negative and roughly 37-ish probably in the other direction, that's usually how it works out is it's a plus and minus situation. Going by the numbers in the inspector, then that's probably going to be perfect. All right, so let's attack this problem from that perspective. Plus and minus 37 on the rotation. And you're probably tempted to say, well, let's see if X range of plus and minus 37. Well, it's not going to be because remember X in this case is a little misleading because we're actually rotating around the Y axis. The reason it's X is because we move along the X axis by using the left and right arrow keys. And that's why we, we made it X, but this is actually going to rotate and it's going to be a very small number because it's going to be input get axis which is a number between 0 and 1 and we have to multiply that times 150 which is a magic number we'll probably take that out later and time dot delta time to smooth it out so that it's in line with fast hardware versus slow hardware we want it to be the same no matter what and then our transform dot rotate pretty straightforward it's just going to rotate however much we tell it to and so this is going to be a reasonably small number, uh, depending on how large this part is. And that will slew our, our turret left and right accordingly. All right, so we don't want to attack X. X is not the right thing to go after. It's actually the rotation. Now, this is a function. This isn't a property. So this is telling it to rotate, not getting us the rotation. So how do we get the rotation? So let's do transform. Just looking around, let's do transform.rotate and see if that's there. How about rotation? Rotation. There it is. Okay, so we have this property called transform.rotation. But I have a sinking suspicion that it's not going to be in something we want. Looky there. So I'm going to roll over it and I'm going to see what it is. And oh no, it's a quaternion. Now, if you recall from last week's lecture, we have learned that quaternions are so difficult to understand that normal humans are not even allowed to look at them. And so that's, and that's right out of the Unity documentation. And they're essentially not wrong in this regard. Um, you know, what we're tempted to do at this point is, let's just write it down so that we know what we're after. We'll say if the rotation is, let's say, well, let's just clamp it. We'll just say if it's less than, and I'll type it out without using any symbols so that we don't get confused. So if it's less than, negative, what do we decide, 37-ish, or more than 37, then essentially um, we'll just say stop rotating. There's a lot of different ways we could do that. Probably the easiest way would just be to set the rotation to the upper boundary, upper or lower boundary. Right. All I mean by that is if it's less than 37, set it to 37. If it's, I, I should say, if it's less than negative 37, set it to negative 37. If it's more than 37, set it to 37. And that just essentially clamps the boundary down. And that will work fine. That will solve our problem. So now we just need to figure out how to get it to do that. So the rotation um, is in quaternions. And so let's see what that even looks like. So we really know that all we care about is y, the y-axis, right? So it's, it's right, even though it says x there, um, this, it's x, y, z, and that's y. And if you look down, you'll see that we are rotating. The green one is the y-axis, so we're rotating around y. So let's go look just for fun. Let's see what's in here. Let's say debug.log, oops. And let's say transform dot rotation dot y. And that will get us what we think the y coordinate would be. 
And what'll be interesting here will be I'm going to I'm going to tell you to look two places. I'm going to tell you to look in the console as well as in the inspector. So let's run this and I'll bring my console over so we can see it. I'll put it up here. Actually, I'll put it right here so that we can see it next to the rotation. So the rotation is zero and here it's potentially one. So let's spin this a little bit and let's see what we get. So at our negative boundary of roughly negative 37, um, our quaternion Y is 0.94. And if we go the other direction, our quaternion for, I've got 39, that's close enough. Um, our quaternion for 39 positive is 0.93. Right? So we probably could attack this that way, but that seems really unintuitive. You're going to have to punch in these numbers of 0.96 and point whatever the other one is. Nine, that, that seems really unintuitive to me. So someone else is going to come along and want to edit your level on your team, hopefully. And they're going to see these numbers and they're going to go, what the heck is this? Um, nobody works with quaternions, which is what I think the real point of the Unity documentation is. Nobody does that. It's odd. It's an odd number, and it, it doesn't make any sense. What we would really rather do is figure out how to deal with these angles that we're seeing up here. And so rotation is going to be the wrong place to look, even though intuitively um, that's probably where a normal sane person would start. So since rotation is in quaternions, it isn't useful. So we'll just take that out. And let me steer you in a slightly better direction. So instead, let's do, whoops, debug.log transform dot local angles. Now, I mentioned Euler angles last time. If you look at how it's spelled, you would think it's Euler. It's E-U-L-E-R, but now it's Euler. It's a man's name, a mathematician with a fantastic beard. And so this is what we want to use. So this is going to give us the rotation in Euler degrees. Now, it's interesting to note that I don't have to say transform.rotation.local Euler angles. It's implicit, because if you're asking for the Euler angles, you're asking for the rotation. And so you don't have to go to transform.rotation.local Euler angles. It's just local Euler angles. Now there's also an Euler angles, and that will give you the Euler angles in terms of the entire world. We don't want that. We want Euler angles in terms of the local game object. So let's do local Euler angles. And again, you're going to get X, Y, and Z. So why don't we look at Y? And let's see what we get this time. So let me run this. I'm trying to pause between my children fighting with each other. Let's run this and see what we get. Once again, we've got zero and we've got zero here. I'll line them up so that you can see them a little easier. We're looking at this number here and this number here. And now we're going to turn to the right and Eureka, they are the same number. Now we're going to turn to the left and oh no. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt, isn't it? You can see what's going on here. It's computing a negative angle for the rotation to the left, but the Euler angles is in terms of a 360 degree circle. And so it's saying negative 60, which is on a circle, just 300 degrees. And so whatever are we to do? And this is where we could get really mathematical if we wanted to. We could use arctangent and arctangent 2 to convert this into radians and then radians would give us you know this sort of hard limit between 0 and 180 and negative 180 and that would be convenient because then it would match what's up here in rotation um, but that's a pain in the rear so let's figure out how to deal with this so the way would be to try to figure this out in terms of the Euler angles and if it's greater than, what did we decide, 37? Why don't we say 30 for now? 
just so that we can do the math in our head. So we'll say plus and minus 30. And that means that effectively we're trying to move between 360 and 30. And that works out all right, except for the whole zero problem, right? So as soon as you get to zero, it resets to, z as soon as you get to 360, it effectively becomes zero again. And so your if statement is gonna be really hard. So let's take a look at what it would be. So it'd be like, um, at the bottom end of this, we'll say if your rotation, go ahead and put that in here. So let's just say a var current rotation equals transform dot local Euler angles dot y. Okay. And I totally missed. Let me get this right. There we go. Okay. That'll be easier to work with. If current rotation, now how are we going to do this? It would be best if we could do it this way, right? If, if we could say if it was less than negative 30, then set it to negative 30. And if it's greater than 30, then set it to 30. That would be the easy way to do it. But we don't have that, do we? So um, if it's less than 330, then we're going to set it to 330. And so it might look something like this. We'll say transform.localeulerangles equals, and we can't set it directly. That's just a rule in Unity. They don't let you. With most things, you have to create a new vector 3. So let's create a new vector 3. And we're just going to use the Euler angles that are there for everything else. So we'll say transform dot local Euler angles dot x. We're not going to mess with that one. This one will say 330. And we'll say local transform dot local Euler angles again. And dot z. So we won't mess with x and z, only y. And if it's less than 330, then we'll set it to that. And you probably, if you're thinking ahead, can already see the problem here. We're starting at zero which is essentially no rotation at all. Well, zero is less than 330. So the very first thing that's gonna happen when we run this is it's going to set it to 330. Boom, there it goes. Okay, now I can move it this way, and that's fine until I get to zero, and then it's gonna blink it back to 330 again. Not really what we wanted. What we wanted, what we really wanna deal with is if it's less than if it's negative 30, positive 30, just like in the transform, that would be the easy thing, right? But we don't have that. So we can make this really gnarly if statement in here, right? You start envisioning it in your head. So if it's between 0 and 330, then do this. Then if it's positive, um, greater than 30 and 0, and hopefully at this point you're starting to see that that's going to be a very big headache. So here's what I propose we do instead. Why don't we convert the angle that we get out of local Euler angles into this negative 30, positive 30 system? Essentially what we're doing here is we're saying if it's greater than 180 degrees, just flip it around and make it negative. And then we can do that with simple math. So let's do that. That seems like the easiest thing to me. I'm going to scroll down and create a new private function. And it's going to return a float. And I will call this convert degrees to pause neg. Because I don't feel like typing out positive negative. Okay, and then I'll give it a float, which is going to be degrees. And this is going to be pretty easy math. It's just going to be if degrees is greater than zero and degrees is less than 180. And why don't we go ahead and make it less than or equal in each case. Then we're going to return just whatever that is. But if it's more than that, then we'll just do a really simple conversion. We'll say, and what I'm going to do is probably overkill. 
Yeah, no, actually, it's not. <laughs> I'm looking at something else. Ignore what the man behind the curtain said. We'll just return whatever the degrees you pass in, minus 360, which ought to give us the number in the negative number that we want. All right, so how do we use this? Let's go back up to where we were working a moment ago. We've got current rotation already. In order to make this nice and clean, why don't we go ahead and create a variable called converted angle, and we will set it equal to convert degrees to pause neg, and we will pass in current rotation. And so now that should get us back our nice angle that we're hoping for. And now our if statements become very straightforward. So we're going to say if current rotation is negative 30, then we're going to set this to 330. That's, we'll just leave that like that for now. Um, we'll fix it later because at this point it's a magic number, and you know how I feel about magic numbers. So we're going to set that to there. And then down here, let's do another if statement. We could even do an else if statement if we were feeling fancy. But I won't. I'll just do a regular one. I'll say if current rotation is greater than 30, then we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to change it to positive 30. So let's put that in there. Put that at the end. We'll make that 30. And that should be good to go. And I'll bring this up a little bit because it's getting out of control. And I have this wrong, don't I? We actually want converted angle, not current rotation. So let's fix that. Anytime you see something grayed out, that means you forgot to use it, which means you should either take it out or use it. OK, now we're looking pretty good. So we've got converted angle less than 30, then we set it to 330. And then we check for converted angle greater than 30, and we set it to 30 if it's bigger than that. OK, so that should work fine. Let's do a quick build, make sure we haven't done anything stupid. Looks good. As long as it says it's succeeded, then we're good to go. Let's switch back over to Unity and see if it worked. So we should be able to roll it this way and come to a stop. It even has a nice little, little bit of a bounce in there. That's kind of nice. And I think we have got it. So that's the first part of this solve. Now we do need to clean this up a little bit because as I mentioned, we've got some magic numbers in there. That's generally a bad thing. So let's go clean those up. So let's scroll up a ways and let's go ahead and add some variables to the top of this so that we don't have these magic numbers. So I'm going to call mine public float. I'll call them left limit. And that will be my negative 30. And public float right limit. And that will be my positive 30. If you wanted to, you could conceivably make one number and then just use you know, that number times negative 1. And then it would be an even range either way if you really wanted to be efficient like that. But that seems OK to me. Plus, there might be an instance where you might want to make them different. So I won't enforce that strictly. In fact, I think we probably will wind up making these slightly different. All right, and then we need to go down and change these so that they're no longer magic numbers. So let's say, what do we call this one? Left limit and right limit here. OK, so that, get, that takes care of those magic numbers. Now what about this magic number? Well, we could use right limit here, and that would, that would work OK. Um, but what about this? We can't use left limit there because it's not going to understand what negative 30 is in terms of an Euler angle. 
So I guess really the, the right thing to do is to make the inverse of this function that we cre recreated earlier. So why don't we call this private float convert. Why not pause neg to circle. Sounds good to me. We'll say just like we did before, float degrees. And we're basically going to do the opposite. So in this one, if the degrees are greater than or equal to, if I can type, negative 180, and the degrees are greater, do I have this backwards? I have this, I have them the right way, I'm saying them wrong. <laughs> if the degrees are greater than negative 180 and they are less than zero, then we're going to return essentially their opposite. So I'll say return and I'll go a little extra here. I'll say math f dot absolute value. That way I don't have to think about it being positive or negative. And I'll just say degrees plus 360. That's overkill. Degrees plus 360 should probably always work, but I like being thorough. Plus, I like the excuse to occasionally throw in a math f function that you might not have, might not have otherwise seen. And there's your absolute value. Otherwise, we're just going to return whatever gets passed in. So return degrees. And there we go. OK, so now we'll come back up here and we'll make a variable called how about circle angle is what we'll call it. Convert pause neg to circle, converted angle. And now we can put circle angle here. And now we can do the same thing down here. Circle angle again. Remember the scope on circle angle in this case goes away. It's out of scope as soon as it leaves the if statement. So I can reuse this variable name. And since I've essentially repeated myself, I should probably look at moving this up so that I don't repeat myself. All right, so this is it should essentially work. And now we have no magic numbers in here. So let me just test it really quickly. Uh oh, must have missed something. And I did I shouldn't have put converted angle I, I should have put uh, left and right limit on this right so I should have said left limit and right limit. Silly me. There we go. That makes more sense, right? So let's try that. There we go. And now we're locked in and we're all set. That's pretty good. All right, let's look one more time at this to see if we can streamline this all. We mentioned that we're doing the exact same thing almost twice, but now we're not. We're not repeat because it's a different function. So I think that's probably as it gets if you think of something or see something that I didn't see, certainly let me know about it.